<laughs> okay. And record. So I'm going to press record and we're live on Facebook. Here we go. Welcome right. everyone to the Sunday Grief Series. We are so excited for our guest today, Lindy Davies. We knew her years ago. It's been 10 plus years. Um, in Richmond, Virginia, we are in the same ward. And um, she and her husband, I just remember that they had been struggling with um, getting pregnant. And I remember she was going through a lot and I just was always in awe of her. And because I knew she was going through a lot, um, but she always was so happy and she always was very positive. I know that that's not every second of every day, but um, she's just always been an inspiration to me. And as we moved away on social media, I watched her <laughs> um, just as they uh, went through their, you know, trying to adopt and um, now they have two beautiful boys and it's just been awesome to see them grow through there but we're so excited to have her she is a formal dental hygienist she did that for about 11 years and then she um has transferred to now a tv star <laughs> on good things utah she shares awesome southern recipes so i still have yet to try it but I am definitely going to try one of her recipes and it's, she's just a fun, bubbly personality. So awesome to watch and we're excited to have her. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so we'll just turn the time over to you, Lindy, and to share your story. I will just add that we do have a common bond with teeth and uh, Lindy <laughs> has a beautiful smile. One of the reasons she has such a beautiful smile is because I know she has healthy gums and tissues as a... <laughs> As a dental hygienist, so Lindy and I can share strong our love for right. dental health, right, Lindy? That's right. <laughs> gotta keep a gotta keep a healthy, gotta floss. <laughs> but no, I, I I went to school at Josh, so I know him very well. And yeah, we had a lot of fun time at that VCU dental school. So he knows his stuff. He really does. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate this opportunity to kind of share my life, um, my story, my struggle with infertility, uh, my struggle after my miscarriage and then struggling with adoption and just trying to get our family to grow. Um, basically, I know I can't tell you everything, but to kind of condense my trial with all of this, it was a good eight years, maybe nine years. So it didn't, it wasn't fast. Um, it was hard, it was long, but it was worth it. It was really worth it. So yes, I'm definitely a survivor because in, as you know, I mean, the loss of grief of a loved one is hard and it doesn't matter what stage of life, it really doesn't. So we, yeah, we struggled with infertility for many, many years. And the thing is, we didn't know why. We did all those tests, everything came back fine. There was no main reason of like, why couldn't I get pregnant? So of course, and you know, growing up in a church, you know, that was kind of like the main thing. Like that's what we stressed about is families and being together forever and like the importance of family relationships. So when it was at that time for us to start a family and then not being like, why, why can't I, you know? So it was hard. So of course we tried everything. I mean, you named it. We tried it. We started with, of course, all the tests. Um, we did an easy round of like an IUI to help with infertility, started with drugs, and then we did the hard stuff. Then we started with the whole um, in vitro um, IVF. So in case of, for those that don't know about IVF, it is a very long, intense process. I mean, one, it's very expensive. So that was a whole other side of it, you know, saving money, trying to get that and insurance and everything. But you have a lot of tests and not just a lot of tests. You got to shoot yourself up all the time. And these needles are big. <laughs> and every day you're shooting yourself with different needles and different hormone shots and at different times because you had to have the right timing, different pills. And I'm not going to lie. I went crazy. 
I went crazy with the hormones, like all the hormones messing inside of you. I mean, it got to the point where I was crying over commercials and I don't know why, and I don't cry, but it's just like, I couldn't help it because I was so crazy with all the hormones, right? So, um, okay, we tried the first time and I knew it, you know, I know it's like not high chance, but we tried, it was negative. I'm like, okay. Here we go again. Got to go to the process all over again. All the shots, all the pills, all the timings. Did that again. Oh, I do got to tell you, the day before retrieval, because they do put you under, you have to do a certain, it's called a trigger shot, right in your back, and the they mark it. And so Thomas would have to give me the shot. And it would take him like, I don't know, five or 10 minutes, because it was huge, and he couldn't do it. And he's like, I can't. <laughs> so it's like, so intense, right? And so, you know, you go through all of that and it's just it's really wearing on your body, especially as a woman. It's just, it's very wearing, emotional, you name it, you go through it. All right, so we did it the second time, still negative. Here we go again. I let my body rest, heal, did it the third time. No, <laughs> I'm like, Okay, I am like Stacy said. I am really an upbeat person. I'm. I am very positive. You know, but that's just my personality. But it does start to get to you. So then you start to like. Okay, am I broken? Like, what's wrong? You start getting sad. You start getting depressed. Um, little things start to bother you. Like, oh, okay, everyone and their dog is getting pregnant. Why can't I get pregnant? You see everyone, like your friends, and it gets emotional. Like, and I don't think people realize the emotional side that, I mean, yes, it's physical. Of course, you go, every woman goes through physical issues with even trying, you know, trying to get pregnant. And then during pregnancy, of course, we all understand that. It's also difficult emotionally for everyone. And so I started feeling kind of like unworthy. I'm like, why, why can't I get pregnant? I don't understand. Nothing's wrong with me per se. They don't know. The doctors didn't know. I had no clue. And so of course, um, going through that was hard. It really was. So I didn't want to go forward, but I kept getting this feeling you need to keep going. You need to keep going. So I'm like, okay, here we go again shots <laughs> many times pills you name it we did it fourth time no I'm like okay now it's getting to the point um i don't know about anybody else but with our our faith in our church every mother's day they always do something big and special for mothers right they're always like we want all the mothers to stand up and here's a flower here's candy and they like just mother everything and it it got to the point where I just I couldn't go I couldn't bear to go to feel the heartache and the pain so I stopped going to church on Mother's Day I couldn't stand it it hurt that bad and I'm deeply thankful for looking back at my friends and other women in the church who understood what I went through because they would text me that day They're like look I know what you're going through and I'm really sorry, but I just want you to know that we're here and that we care. So those little acts of service of just a simple text really like helped lift me up. It really did help me. It just helped me to like, okay, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. So then um, we decided to go again, but this was now the fifth time and a lot of money, a lot of money. I'm like, this is it. I, one, we can't afford it. <laughs> and two, I can't have my body to go through this anymore. I'm like, I can't physically do this anymore. So this time we knew it was our last time, right? And so we wanted to go all out, but we also wanted to produce a lot of eggs so that we could save them and freeze them and use them at a later, later date. So they decided to up everything. So like even more shots and the dosage were was higher and everything was, they just wanted to go to the max because we wanted at least at least 20 eggs like okay i could do this you know giving yourself the pep talk i could, I could do this i 
I give people shots all the time. No big deal, right? I can do this. So we did it. And it was heartbreaking because I wanted 20 and I only got five. Like, why did I only get five? I don't, why? What's wrong with me, right? And then the whole, what's wrong with me? So instead of saving these and freezing them for a later date to have, you know, like more than one child, to have siblings, I'm like, that wasn't an option now. They had to use all five. So they used all five. One took, and that was the happiest, like, two months of my life. And it was great. I was like beaming, you know, going like baby shopping. I'm like, it worked. It ha I was one, it was wonderful. And I say the happiest two months because then it was at the two month mark where I had a miscarriage. So it's like, oh, it was devastating. Like it was beyond, uh, beyond brutal. It was heartbreaking. It was depressing. I was sad. I was heartbroken. I was a mess. I'm not going to lie. It was hard. It was really hard. And so I was, I'm trying to think like what helped me through that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything. I'm not going to lie. I was really sad at that time, but I just kept, the only thing that helped me through this really was praying at this point, at this time in my life. And at this also at the exact same time when I was having miscarriage, when I had the miscarriage, it seemed like everyone was having baby showers. That was the last place I wanted to be. But I had this feeling I needed to go to be a good friend and to support him and it's okay. But I was like, oh, that's, you know, kind of hard. So anyway, I did that, but I think what really helped me through that time and through that heartache was that not only did I go to baby showers, but um, I actually hosted a baby shower for one of my best friends. So I had it at my house, gave her the best baby shower in the world, you know, cause like really I'm like, this is for both of us. <laughs> so I went all out, you know, everything was food, balloons, decorations, you games, you name it, we did it. Because really, I wanted to, like, we were selling, of course, we were celebrating her because this was also her rainbow baby. So she just had a miscarriage. And so it kind of brought us together, right? Because we both understood the loss of loss of losing a baby and loss of a loved one. And yet it brought us together even stronger. So providing that service for her really really just helped me have more love in my heart at that time. Mm. It helped me to really just have joy again, you know, it be having joy in the little things. So that's, I think a huge part with my story and how, what helped me to go forward and to have joy and to live life was to actually serve others. And that was something as simple as hosting a party or hosting a baby shower or um, helping others, you know, with anything to do with baby, even though I didn't want to, but the more I did, the more happier I got. So that's one of the things that we went through. And it really did though, this providing that service to one of my best friends actually brought the greatest joy, like to my life. So that's, that's all. That was amazing. Really was. And I'm glad I did it. Okay, so then at that point, I just needed to stop, you know, relax, live again. Do I really want to go forward? Because I just went through a lot. My body just went through a lot. My mind, emotionally, I was exhausted. I was exhausted. It was hard. But I still had this feeling, no, nope, you're going to be a mom. You, you got to go another way. You, you could do it. I go, okay, here, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So that's when Thomas and I decided to go forward with adoption and with the adoption process. Um, that's a whole other story and a whole other ball game. Adoption is wonderful and also hard at the same time. If you don't know, you have to take a lot of classes beforehand, a lot of background checks, thousands of forms, financial forms, I had to get a physical, my dog had to get a physical, like 
this is just before we could even be approved just for our home study right before we could even be approved to adopt so you have all this work to do just that just so you can go forward with adoption so of course that takes a lot of time a lot of resources it's exhausting again mentally um because it's it's a lot of work it really is so we kept going forward and at this time we decided to do the cheaper route because we just spent a lot of money with the ivf so we decided to do it through an it's a online website like all, all about love basically you just put your your information out there and then people can contact you so there's no middleman it's not the adoption agency where they weed out everyone no so but it got us in contact with a lot of potential birth moms so that's what we decided to do so of course every day you're like trying to put yourself out there you know you take pictures and you're like this is what we're doing because of course they want to see your life and what you're about so you're always trying to like what can we do you know this is how to portray yourself because this is actually probably one of the biggest interviews of your life really if you think about it so we went forward with that um and the first time that a potential birth mother said i choose you I want you to be the mother of my baby. I just brought tears to my eyes. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is it. I'm finally going to be a mom. I can't wait. And I was so excited, right? So of course I would do anything and everything for that, for that birth mom. Um, to, make, to make a long story short, I'm just gonna tell you the first time we did it, we realized um, she was not pregnant the whole time and just kind of told us that she was and kind of got my hopes up and that kind of really hurt once we found out that she was not really pregnant i'm like okay keep going kept going a couple months down the line this time um you know we, we found another she found us we were going forward she would send us pictures and it sends us pictures of the belly and then she would um, talk to counselors because you also have to go to a lot. It's also very legal. You got to get lawyers and everyone's talking to lawyers and counselors and everything. So we're so excited. So of course, I'm so excited because I thought because I was going to get a baby girl. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have a girl. And you know, she told us about the girl and we started shopping for it, started shopping for dresses, you know, just fun girl stuff. So I'm so excited. And anyway, we were talking to her for about three to four months and then we had everything packed so the night before we were supposed to fly to Oregon to get our little girl she called us and told us that she had to go through emergency c-section and um that was the last we ever heard from her and that was the last that anyone ever heard from her lawyers my lawyers all uh, everybody so I wish her the best but clearly we did not <laughs> fly to Oregon to get our baby girl there. Uh, so there it goes again. Heart was ripped out. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I lost it. It, it was hard. Cause you know, you try, it's been years. That was years. I remember my exact feelings because we're on like seven years now trying to have a baby. And here you think you're gonna get one, but it didn't happen. And of course, it was because it wasn't meant to be but it was hard it still is i don't know why but because i remember those feelings right and i remember thinking okay what am i doing wrong what is wrong with me and then of course you think all these negative thoughts right and the only thing that helped me and i mean even thomas was devastated at this at this time and i think it was a good week or two where we didn't do anything really and so the only thing um that helped me through that time was just prayer i remember praying like we're having these real very real and raw conversations with god of like why why am i broken what is wrong with me you know am i not worthy enough what am i not supposed to have family 
what is going on, right? And it hurt, I remember so strongly just the thoughts and feelings of like, this is what the atonement of Jesus Christ is for. Use it and apply it. So that's what I did. Um, I just dove myself into scriptures. I did everything I could to learn more about loss and how he overcame loss and just my savior. So really prayer helped a lot going to church, but I also had this other feeling of how I could help others by sharing my story. And I was like, share my story, what? So that's what I did. I kept having this feeling that, okay, share your story because you're going through this trial so that you can help others. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that, <laughs> but I guess, right? So I started sharing my story, of course, to all my friends. I think everyone in Richmond knew at that time. Um, I, but not just that, I started sharing my, my story through church talks um, and just in general, really. And I didn't realize how just by sharing your story and talking to others of how much that really does help others because we're, we're not here alone, right? We all have trials in life and we all have heartache and we're here to help each other. We're here to lift each other up and we're here to be angels for others because that's what God wants us to do. So after a, a couple of talks that I gave in church, I remember specifically, I mean, I was very real and honest, told him everything, like what I went through. And um, for a couple of weeks, actually, people would just re like text me or respond or come up to me. They're like, you know, I'm also struggling with infertility and thank you. Thank you for telling your story. I think I just realized I'm not alone. And that's the thing I think, which is really hard with infertility is this such like a taboo, right? You don't talk about it. We don't want to talk about it because we don't feel like, hey, guess what? I'm broken, right? We don't want to do that. And so talking about it has really helped me to help others. And they have also reached out and help others. And to see the connection of how it's all come to play has been wonderful. Like, I get it life we're here to help each other and to go through these trials so that we don't have to suffer alone and i'm really thankful that now i understand however back then when you go through the process and you go through the grieving you don't you don't understand until afterwards and now i have a better understanding and i'm glad that i actually listened to those promptings that i felt that i had to share because i realized just even talking is providing some type of service to someone to letting them know that like okay i'm not alone here um i'm not nothing's wrong with me i'm okay i'm not broken it's just you know, with timing. And I think it's with God's timing too, honestly. And with that, so again, I kept going forward, still having a hard time. I kept getting my feeling. Can you need to try again? Are you okay? I don't know if I can do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle anymore, like emotionally. But I just had this feeling, no there's somebody out there for you. So we did it again, put, out, put us out there, you know, in the adoption world and had a couple people. This time though, um, everything went through. Like, I just had the feeling you have to go forward in faith. So I went forward. This time I did do a couple of things differently. I, instead of like pictures, we would always FaceTime. I always made sure that she was real. And I asked her to show me her belly the first time we talked and she just whipped up her shirt, and showed me her belly, her pregnant belly. But it was, it was amazing. So we were, we would talk FaceTime for a good three to four months. Um, we got to know each other very well. And during that time, I asked her if she wanted to meet us in person. She's like, yes, of course. So Thomas and I drove to Tennessee to, um, to meet her. And it felt like we were family. I can't explain it, but it, it was just like an instant connection, right? And, but at first you're really, really nervous. Of course you're nervous. Cause you're like, I'm going, I'm going to like the biggest interview in my life. I'm going to interview for her baby. Like, am I going to be good enough? So you're like, you get all nervous and scared. And, 
well, you know, I'm sweating bullets because I sweat like a man. So I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so we said a little prayer. We went in and we had lunch and it was the best lunch. I think we were there for a couple of hours and then she wanted to show us around her town. So we went around her town in her car and we were driving around and we got up to this park and we were just talking and I asked her point blank. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta know, why did you pick us? And she said, because I had a feeling I'm supposed to be your surrogate. Whoa. Chills just went up my spine. Like they still do. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. So exciting. So yeah, we became really good friends and um, basically I held her right leg as she gave birth to our baby boy and Thomas was there and he got to cut the umbilical cord and she introduced us as like, here's your mommy and daddy. So that took eight long years, but I'm glad I did it. I'm really glad that I never gave up. Um, wow, to think like, I'm sorry, it just like hits me, but like to think if I would have gave up, I wouldn't have Grayson. I wouldn't have my boys. But it was through the power of faith and my testimony of knowing that God loves me that I just had to have faith in him and in his timing, right? And that's what it's all about. And so we just kept going forward and I'm glad we did because honestly, I know with all of my heart, he was always supposed to be ours. He just had to go that way. You know, um, he looks just like us and he's just always supposed to, he's our son. And I am deeply grateful for his tummy mommy and for us, for letting us be his mommy. And I'm thankful that I was able to trust in, in our Lord to go forward in that and with that faith. But really um, just knowing that what helped me to get through that eight year trial was really, you know, serving others, serving friends, um, attending baby showers, doing like little things, little kinds, little acts of kindness, um, talking about my story because that to just talking and helping others through their trials is another huge act of service. Mm -hmm. It was the little things that helped me and that and that is what I'm very, very grateful for. I'm grateful to know that despite grief and loss of a loved one, that there can be joy. There still can be joy as long as we put our, our faith in God and to go forward. So today, I just want to say that um, I want to challenge everyone here listening to find a little way to, to provide service, little acts of service, and it will really help you feel the joy and peace within and the joy that God wants you to feel. And I just want to say thank you for taking your time to listening to my story. It's amazing. That's so amazing, Lindy. I have just got tears, the chills, <laughs> all good feelings also all, all, all together listening to you. And I just, when you first um, just talked about doing that baby shower for your friend, oh, wow. Um, yeah. What an amazing thing because uh, um, just going through my loss with Lily, there were things I didn't want to do. But I, I can totally relate to you how if you just do it, um, the joy that comes from it is pretty amazing. <laughs> so right. that's awesome. And um, yes, thank you so much for your story. Uh, you just, I know in my own life, there's been people that have struggled and thankful that you are willing to share your story because it is a hard topic. And I I guess I have a question for you. So if yeah. there's someone that is struggling with infertility, um, what could be something that I could do for her? Because I obviously don't relate because <laughs> I've been blessed with children. So I guess <laughs> uh -huh. that's a hard one for me. Like you know what to do for her. What are some? I think, well, I'll be honest with you. I remember times when, some women friends wouldn't invite me to parties or baby showers because they didn't want to hurt my feelings, but it did. 
like I still want to be involved. So even though it involves kids, like still involve them or still invite them. Yeah. That, yeah, that will really, really help. And just knowing that you're there for them is huge. So just keep doing what you're doing, Stacey. You just, you're a wonderful friend. I mean, I know that for a fact. So keep being you, keep being a good friend and just really reach out to them and just text them like, hey, I'm thinking about, yeah, how you doing? So little things like that okay. would be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. We need to get you um, in touch with a author or something and get you a book written. Seriously? Holy cow. <laughs> that is that's it. I don't, I didn't know all those details. Like I knew the surface story, but I didn't know all the details and just the, that you were able to be there during the birth of Grayson. Wow. That's, yeah. that's what a blessing, right? Like that. I bet the joy was just indescribable. That's it really so was. It really was. And I'm really glad and happy because she didn't have anyone like her mother passed away and her father, no one else was in that delivery room, but us. So I am so support. glad. Yeah, we were there for her. She was there for me. I mean, we were there for each other and it was amazing. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. So yeah. I love when you said um, how you tell your story and how, how it it's, how has helped and it's helping people. There's this quote I found I thought was awesome. It says, I love when people that have been through hell walk out of the flames carrying buckets of water for those still consumed by the fire. And it's by Stephanie Sparkles. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I, just, I just thought that was so awesome. And I can, I, that's what I picture you as this strong <laughs> angel who's gone through hell and back. And <laughs> that's helping so many people that are struggling in the midst of their struggles. So <sighs> thank you. Thank you so much for being a light. <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> i just look up to you so much and everything that you've done and continue to do and what you've been through i mean you guys are also very strong so thank you for everything that you share thank you well one of the things that as you're well aware we try and think of opportunities that people can do locally where you live and and if there are any service opportunities for example if there's a is it is it October National Infertility Month? Yeah. Yeah. Month. Mm -hmm. So if there's a time that survivors can help or partner with you or some interest that you have, we would love to to help out with that. And and that's really the essence of what we're trying to do is to create service opportunities in all communities where we can find people that have a experience and have had their hearts unfortunately broken but find healing through service um that would be awesome yes um, really really great yeah oh yeah so. thank you that would be amazing yes let's let's do something cool okay awesome. <laughs> and and um you know i've got two fantastic hygienists in my office right now but <laughs> south dakota may, may need to recruit you and thomas up here to <laughs> Rapid City for hygiene purposes. So just let Thomas know that that might be on the docket here. Well, okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know I'll always have a job. So thank you. <laughs> okay, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Lindy. Thank you guys. Oh, thank you for everything. You guys are amazing. I love and miss you very much. Thank you. I miss you too.